Hello and welcome to this edition of Let's Talk About It. My guest today is Kelly. Kelly, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. You guys know I like to share inspiring and motivating stories, and this story certainly is one of those stories. We're going to talk a little bit about a very serious subject, which is the subject of cancer um, and MD Anderson Hospital as it ties in to Remax Northwest Realty. Is that correct? Well, it's actually Texas Children's. Texas Children's, I stand corrected. Texas Children's Hospital. Right, and okay. Children's Miracle Network. And the Children's Miracle Network. Now tell me, Kelly, how did you get involved with the Children's Miracle Network? Uh, my office, uh, Remax Northwest, they, uh, we're like a sponsoring office where all of the Remax offices are. Okay. So the agents contribute a portion of every transaction, every sale of every house. Uh -huh to uh, Children's Miracle Network and each year we try to do one big event to just bump up what our regular amount would be that we would give to them so okay and I, that, it's so awesome when there's a company like like Remax and that's specifically Remax Northwest we want to make sure we have clarity on that right well it's actually all of the Remax offices participate in Children's Miracle Network um, it's just our specific Remax Northwest that did this one event. Okay, and that was a big fundraiser. Correct. Uh, that actually took place last. Was it last week, Kelly? Last was it last Friday that I was there? Yes. Yeah, I actually had an opportunity to come out and enjoy the festivities that took place that day. And one of the highlights of the evening was Kelly actually getting her hair cut um, on that evening. So I wanted to make sure I captured that on film, and we did. And the purpose of her doing that was. Well. Uh, basically, I've you know done so many different charity things and walked so many miles for uh, breast cancer, or I even took a motorcycle ride for the dogs in the shelter, and uh, all kinds of benefits. But I'd never myself done anything for Children's Miracle Network or Texas Children's Hospital um, because I'm not a realtor. I basically, I do all of their accounting and uh, administrative work, so I wasn't contributing myself, so I came up with the idea. A plan B for it. Correct. Right. And it was, it, you know, one, one thing that was interesting, I can actually identify with you, I had locks myself, <clears throat> and I decided I was going to cut my locks off a couple of years ago, and my purpose and goal with cutting them was to donate them to the Locks of Love. I thought I was going to donate my hair to Locks of Love. I'm like, oh, I'm getting rid of it anyway. Why don't I, you know, make a contribution to Locks of Love and bless some child? Only to find out, Kelly, that they did not accept locked hair. This right. was after my haircut. <laughs> so I, I was like, what am I going to do with this hair? You know, I got this bag of hair with a rubber band around it or whatever. Uh, but Kelly actually cut hers off so that it could be utilized to make wigs for kids that had cancer. Correct. And I certainly commend you for that. I think that's awesome when you can make a sacrifice like that to make a difference in the life of someone else. Well, I, it, it, I knew that it was going to have to be something big in order to try and raise the 20000 that I had set the goal at. Mm -hmm. I really thought that it was worth more to me, that it should have been about 100000 really. <laughs> but uh, realistically, I, I set the goal on 20000 which uh, I believe the final number that we got was just right at 19. So I was wow. kind of committed at that point to cut my hair, whether we had reached the 20,000 or not, because the, the donating my hair to Lux Love, I could have easily cut my hair off and made the four ponytails, mm -hmm. um, but that would not have generated the money. Right. And so basically, uh, co-workers, friends, family, everyone saying there's no way you're going to do it. So that was how I decided to get the money in the donations to actually shave my head. So it I think it's fantastic, number one, that someone is willing to make that type of sacrifice. Uh, and number two, that you're able to give to somebody else that makes and make a difference. Correct. You know, and I think that's what life is about making a difference. What good is life if we can't make the difference in the lives of other people? And obviously you've, you've done that. And now since you've done it, other kids will be blessed to have hair that they would not have had otherwise, Kelly. I hope so. <coughs> yeah. I, I do hope and you so. had a lot of hair up there. I had a lot of hair. Yeah. I, I, I saw Kelly's hair and I was like, dang, she's going to cut all that off? And next thing I know, about, what, three or four hours passed and you were sitting in that chair and I'm like, okay, let me get my camera so I can <laughs> capture this moment. 
and uh, it was really interesting. And you guys will get an opportunity, of course, to see the uh, the pictures um, from where we started to where we are now uh, with no hair. Your hair looks like it's actually grown some just I, since I the other day. Is. I think it's doubled. Yeah, the double. I, I think so. <laughs> I realize yeah. that I have uh, several different colors in my hair mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I never knew I had. <laughs> I guess they just all blended together. Now I look like a calico cat or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look like a calico cat, you look like a calico cat for a good cause. That's right. I hope so. I hope I hope all the kids benefit. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was happy to do it. Yeah. So tell me, what's next, uh, Kelly? you have any other plans as far as Texas Children's Hospital is concerned? Uh, maybe no. for next year? What are you going to do next year? Cut your hair again? Uh, no, I, I, that's <laughs> been done. You know, I, I'll figure something else out. You know, I may just continue donating my hair to Locks of Love each year mm -hmm. without having to do the big event and the fundraiser. Yeah. But uh, we usually will come up. My, my original plan with this whole thing was because the events, when you have, you know, a hundred women trying to plan something, mm -hmm. it is difficult. So I thought this year I would come up with a plan uh -huh. that originally that whole plan was designed to take place online. Really? So I set up the website through Children's Miracle Network. Uh, then we set up the Facebook page. And then it was just going to all be through the internet. The internet. And there was going to be no work involved. But the uh, powers that be that pay my salary decided <laughs> that we needed to have a huge event over this whole thing, which just meant the next four months of, of work, which I was trying to avoid because I have enough work at work. So uh, it, it, it changed form, but it ended up being fun. Yeah, and it really was because not only were you participating, but so many other vendors and businesses that are local uh, actually participated. I myself contributed my time to the cause, um, and there were so many other vendors, and there was food and, and drink and... Yeah. It was just a whole lot of stuff going on. Uh, I had a wonderful time myself, outside of being hot because it was in the sun. Oh, but uh, other than that, <laughs> we had a really great time. Um, Kelly, is there anything else you want to share with us about um, Remax Northwest? Um, you know, I mean, it's a great company. Remax itself is a great company. Remax Northwest is like a, a big family. And everyone tries to contribute, not just to say, you know, we did this, we did that. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, they they genuinely want to do something to help the kids each year. So I don't. Next year, I guess we'll have to come up with something bigger. This was our biggest event that we had had. Okay. We had community garage sales in the past and a holiday uh, craft bazaar. Okay. Um, but this was this raised the, the most money so far. So I'm not sure how we're wow. going to top it. Wow, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. We need more people like you out there doing these types of things to make a difference in the lives of others. <laughs> and you've done a wonderful job. Thank you. I hope that this story has actually inspired you guys to go out and do something that can make a difference in your life. And not only in your life, but in the lives of others. Hello and welcome to this edition of Let's Talk About It. My guest today is Jerry. Jerry, how are you? I'm wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful is hard to beat, my grandmother would say. Today's topic is about abstinence. Now, from what I understand, you've actually had a lot of dialogue about abstinence through your church and uh, other entities. How did you get involved in the process of, of the, the abstinence? What got you started in that, Jerry? My life. Your <laughs> my, life, yes, okay. Yes, my life. <laughs> in the uh, downward spiral of my life and uh, what was going on. I think I was about uh, 40, 40, 45. Okay. And I had, uh, I thought I was already saved. And okay. then God touched me one day and I really <laughs> got saved. And uh, I started reading the Bible and everything. And I tried to live my life uh, as close to it as I can. To the, know, as close to the Bible as, good. as I can. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, if you're going to... Uh, follow after uh, Jesus and you should do what he wants you to do. Right. So that was a struggle in my life. Sex, mm -hmm. sex uh, had always been a struggle ever since I was uh, a teenager, about uh, 16. Okay, uh, okay. So, and I was a young wife and everything, so that that started it off. That's but, the, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's what happened. So after that, 
And I didn't want to uh, live my life like that because it, it wasn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I started uh, going attending church, and I started reading the Bible and getting to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And just like an onion, those layers start peeling off. Really? Mm -hmm. So in that process, you began to learn why you behave the way you behaved? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be like from a promiscuous perspective right. mm -hmm. and things like that. So what did you end up discovering about yourself as you peeled the layers away, Jerry? Oh, it took me a while and a lot of self-help books Okay. and a lot of conferences on singles. And uh, one that really sticked to my mind was we went to St. John's. We were a my daughter and I were a part of St. John's. So was that St. John's downtown, downtown? Pastor Rudy Rasmus? Mm -hmm. Yes. And we had a singles conference. Okay. And a young man gave his story. <coughs> and that was, I forgot his name, but that was so, 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 so good to me and inspiring. Okay. And I said, oh, my goodness. And he told, me, uh, told us how he was abstinence and how okay. this young lady that he was dating was not and how... <laughs> She was like the Jezebel type, okay. and she had a baby already, and those signs were there mm -hmm. that said that he really shouldn't have been involved with her, but he, okay. you know, she did the, the witchcraft Jezebel thing okay. <laughs> by uh, trying, you know, uh, by wooing him. And she uh -huh, to entice him. him. Yes. So uh, he told us that story, and uh, she couldn't get what she wanted from him okay. because he wouldn't. He uh, he wouldn't succumb right. to you know to her. Uh, he stood strong with his convictions. Yes, and his, right. his convictions, and uh, she told the uh, authorities later on that he had raped her. Oh wow! And oh, it was just so devastating. Wow! And he told us that story, and when we finished, and he was telling us how you know when uh, you are first penetrated, when you're a virgin, mm -hmm. and how it should be your very first time with your husband. Yeah. And how that the, the hymen and how it bursts and the ring of blood goes around. Mm -hmm. The male. Yeah. Right. And uh, he told us that story and it was just so captivating. And when he finished, we were all like, I want to do that. I want to okay. do that. And that's when we did our pledge uh, okay. to become born again versions. The one and the ones that were versions already, uh -huh. how they were going to stay that way. Wow. And that was my my first my first encounter. Okay. And uh I'm not saying that it was an easy road. Yes. Because I fell off the horse a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And that's good. <laughs> and you know what you're being very that's transparent right. and being honest. And uh, mm -hmm. that that I, 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 that's funny. I could mm -hmm. go somewhere with that, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but uh yeah, and a lot of times when we're trying to work toward a particular goal or make some changes in our life, mm -hmm. we don't always get it the first time. No. You know, mm -hmm. but thank God we can stop and start over. Wow. You know, and we can't get so frustrated with ourselves when we falter, but we just have to get up and start mm -hmm. and start over. So that happened to you a couple of times where you you yes. fell off the horse, mm -hmm. as you so say, <laughs> and uh, then you have to get back on mm -hmm. and, and start over. So what motivated you to, when you started back over? What's, what motivated you like that? Uh, the Bible. And, <clears throat> the Bible, uh, okay. And all the uh, stories in the Bible. And uh, I read about Tamar and how uh, her, her brother Amnon uh, raped her and everything. And I read uh, about the other Tamar. And how uh, she she didn't her son she needed to have a son okay and she had a son by her father-in-law and uh, you need to read that this is all in the Bible yes in the Bible it has love stories uh, it has everything you, you want to read wow. a good book pick up the Bible it has wow. everything wow. you think it, you want and you know what there's so much that's in it that we just don't know about because mm -hmm. we don't pick it up yeah and and I'll be honest with you I'm one of those people mm -hmm. uh, I do read it periodically. Mm -hmm. But I'm certainly not an avid reader mm -hmm. of the Bible. And if I said that I was, I would be dishonest right now. Yes. Uh, but I am uh, educated by mm -hmm. people like yourself who do read it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, another friend of mine uh, who also reads a lot, you know, and that type of thing. Now, how does your story relate to the biblical stories that, that you have read? Uh, who would you best describe yourself as from a biblical perspective? I would say Tamar because... You know, when you when when you're having sex and you're just like out there, mm -hmm. you you're being really raped over and over and over, raped in your mind, raped in you know bodily. Okay. Because uh, they 
they, they don't love you because they don't love you. It's it's lust. It's not love. Okay. To okay. me. Right. And that's why my, uh, my ministry is called Tamar and David. Is that right? Yes. Because David, you know how David was uh -huh. like Bathsheba and he what he did to get to Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. You know he sent. Uh, her husband to battle to be killed to be killed right yeah so you know what people will not do for sex right and, and you know you know when you think about that so many so many men have actually fallen mm -hmm. because of sex mm -hmm. we can start with bill clinton mm -hmm. you know and we can name a whole bunch of other uh, men in our history yes that have fallen prey to uh the lust of the flesh mm -hmm. you know and and it can certainly be the demise of of, of of a lot of men and not only that but yeah. businesses mm -hmm. relationships mm -hmm. Uh, marriages, yeah. uh, the list, money. the list, the money. <laughs> uh, yeah, the list, the list goes on. Oh, now you talk about abstinence a lot. Um, what are some of the, what's some advice you would give the young girls who are coming up today as it mm -hmm. relates to abstinence and that type of thing? Uh, save yourself. Save yourself. Save, save yourself for your husband. And uh, I know that that is just uh, outdone and been done over right. and over. But I tell my daughters, from my perspective, I can only give you my experience. Absolutely. I can't give you what's going to happen to you in the future because I don't know it. Mm -hmm. But I can only teach you from my perspective and yeah. from my experience. And from my experience, I would have waited. Really? I would have waited uh, to get married. I would have waited mm -hmm. on God to send me my husband. Okay. Yes, because uh, I got married when I was 17, mm -hmm. and I just knew that he was the one. He mm. made me feel like he was the one. Right. And uh, not getting too personal, but my life is an open book anyway. Yeah, you I know. know. He had, uh, he married me, uh -huh. and he had one child, uh, December, and he had another one by someone else in June. So <laughs> okay. that's what I had to deal with. <laughs> right, you know? right. So infidelity mm -hmm. and all that, and all that hurt that I had. And I carried that hurt for 25 26 years. Do you know how much baggage that was? Wow. For me to carry that that long. But now I'm free. I'm free. Oh. And then <laughs> I'm free because abstinence and, and, and it frees your mind mm -hmm. because you have to, before you can do anything to abstain from anything, drinking, smoking, anything, sex, you have to free your mind. Yeah, the mind is something else. And you have to forgive. And when you forgive him, that, that, that allows you to throw the baggage off your back, the backpack off. Okay. All that all that baggage is gone. Right. Because you're free. Uh huh. And my freedom came with God. Right. With Jesus in my life. Okay. And that that book, the Bible, mm -hmm. directed me to what I'm supposed to I am not perfect. And like I said, I fell off the wagon a couple of times. Right. But I've been on it now for eight years. And that's saying for eight, something for me. <laughs> that is saying something for you. Yes, it is. That's saying wow, something. Wow, eight years of abstinence. That yes. is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that before that, fantastic. it was uh, five and then eight. You know. Yeah, that is great. Yes, that's that, great. that is fantastic, mm -hmm. Jerry. I, I, I certainly be. commend you, Thank you on that. You know, And you know, I'll be honest with you. Sex invites a lot of things into your life mm -hmm. that are that, that's not always for your higher good. Right. You know, and at, at this day and time, uh, it can be a little scary, actually. Yes, especially in this day and time. In this day and time, yeah. But uh, to see someone, uh, uh, a woman such as yourself, who is practicing abstinence and, and practicing some discipline, because it certainly takes mm -hmm. discipline. It does. Uh, to, it, yeah. Especially when you're used to it. You know, it's when you're accustomed to that. When you when you're a virgin uh, and you don't know what it is, so it's it's kind of easier. Mm -hmm. But when you've already had the taste. Yeah. And the taste that you think was good. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're trying to, um, right. it's just like a, 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 a delicious piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> and you love that cake. <laughs> so, you know, you want that cake. Right, uh, you want that cake. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> That was good. That was a good analogy, but it's it's, it's true. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you have something good, you want some more. Yeah. Uh, that's just real talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pudding, cake, chocolate, it's whatever. Like, it is, yeah, mm -hmm. you want some more. That just, but that's real talk. You so just we have, have to learn control. You have to learn control, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not always easy. Nope, at all. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's not easy. Uh, but you know, this is an adult conversation, right. and these are the type of things that we talk about. Yeah, yeah. And some of them just crack me up. And hey, y'all saw me laughing, but it's just me. Mm -hmm. You know, I might buzz out laughing again, but because I can, but I can relate. Yes. Uh, to what it is that you're saying um, about that. So when you talk, when you a moment ago you mentioned uh, young ladies and mm -hmm. and teaching them to save themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't like to just talk about an issue, but I like mm -hmm. to give out some solutions. Mm -hmm. So um, when you talk about saving yourself, what are some of the practices that we can instill in the young ladies today to help them save themselves? Like I said, I can only tell you from my experience and what oh. I did. Okay. And uh, the the hardest thing is dating. Okay. The hardest thing. So I haven't been on a date. Of, well, I've been on a date with friends. Yeah. Strict, strictly friends. Mm -hmm. But I haven't been on a date. A date. Uh, I went on a date about a year ago. And uh, the my, my hardest part is that I tell my daughters, don't take off your shoes. <laughs> Because what, 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 what happens she when just, you take off your shoes? When you get comfortable. Oh, okay. So you can't keep your shoes on. So if you keep your shoes on, everything else is going to stay on. Right, well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. That's, 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 my, that's, that's mine. So uh, I took my shoes off, but, you know, I saved myself. <laughs> right. Because I was like, what am I doing? Uh, <laughs> This, right, uh, right. So, so nothing with them, mm -hmm. and then the next day, we we didn't ever get to the next day because something happened. Because you kept your shoes on the uh, first day. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, <laughs> we had talked on the phone for a year, and we had we had known each other like for a long, long time. Okay. But we had talked on the phone for a year. <clears throat> mm -hmm. We did all that, and so uh, one word. And I always pray to God, yeah. God, if this is not the one for just, me, just knock him on out please the, yeah. take him away. Okay. And he will do it. That's all you have to say. Okay. He will do it. So what happened was he called me back, and we were getting ready to go somewhere, and he said something about because you need. He put need. You need me. And that was the wrong. Oh, word. that was it. I said I don't need you. So and I saying didn't that really to an independent off. woman. But still, <laughs> but I I didn't go off. But I just mm -hmm. told him no, I don't need you. And that just really ticked him off. And I never heard from him again. And we stay like in the same community. But Is that I right? Never. But I was like, thank you, God. Thank yeah. you. And you know, you have just know. prayed for that. So sometimes yeah. you have to be careful what you pray for. Mm -hmm. Don't and, take and, your shoes off. And don't take your shoes off. <laughs> and pray. <laughs> and if you pray for uh, whoever, you know, coming to in your life. Yeah. And if they're not for you, just pray about it. Right. Right. Just pray about it. And uh, Pastor August, uh, at Bethel, New Bethel, right. Bethel family, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He uh, had a sermon <coughs> Sunday, and that's what he, no, last Sunday, and he was saying that he doesn't believe in dating, and I hope I'm not no, no, quoting no, him you, out you, of school. Yeah, it's okay. But that's what he was saying about the dating. Uh -huh. He said, you know, you start dating, and you just, that's when it's the downhill, because you start getting in trouble, uh -huh. because of, you know, and I like the group date. Okay. Date in groups, if you're going to date. Okay. You know. But uh, that's what that's that's uh, my feelings uh -huh. on it. You know, date dating groups. Right. Because if you don't, <coughs> then you get along. Yeah, and you, your shoes come off. <laughs> and you don't and, want your shoes. To come and off. you don't want your shoes to come <laughs> off, and then you get in trouble. Well, yeah. Because that's trouble. just the start of, the, of other things. And I I think uh, parents should communicate with their children more. That's very important. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I think a lot of parents stray away from having dialogue mm -hmm. that's pertaining to sex. Yeah. They like they shy dirty. away from it or something like that. And then the kids, of course, can be a right. little embarrassed. Mm -hmm. But these are the types of things that need to be discussed yeah. with our kids in an effort to, to have some preventive measures mm -hmm. to go forth. Imagine being my children <coughs> and my grandchildren. Oh, Jesus. I know. <laughs> That's what uh, Tahira said I, when I told her I was coming on the show. Mm -hmm. She said, good, so you can go tell somebody else. <laughs> <Besides her. laughs> and that's, that's out of love. You know, you don't want yeah. your kids to go through certain things if, they, if it can be prevented. Mm -hmm. But they you know? listen, and that's why I tell, and we teach the uh, parents as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we have sessions with the parents so we can tell them what to look for, to, uh, you know, so that they can be aware. And uh, the cyber sex and... Yeah, the, uh, and you know what? Gonna, uh, let's talk about that in just a moment when we come back, uh, because I want to talk about that a, a little bit more. Uh, mm -hmm. Because the, the, in the age of uh, technology, mm -hmm. so much has changed. We're going to be back in just a moment with more. Let's talk about it with my wonderful guest, Jerry. 
Hello and welcome back to this edition of Let's Talk About It. We're talking about abstinence and uh, young ladies, well actually not just young ladies, mm -hmm. but men as well right. being abstinent in this day of so many things going on. Mm -hmm. We were talking before we, we went to the break about um, technology mm -hmm. and the role that technology has played uh, from a sexual perspective right. now, mm -hmm. uh, because kids have access to so much stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually, a lot of stuff needs to be monitored right. by the parents because uh, so many things are happening now. Now, we were talking about staying abstinent mm -hmm. and that type of thing. What would you say to a young girl who's 12, 13, 14, 15, teenage years, uh, about keeping herself or saving mm -hmm. herself? Uh, for self-respect, uh, you know, get your self-esteem uh, uh, intact. Self-esteem. Because mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. And a lot of young ladies are being raised by women mm -hmm. and they don't have that father around or they don't have that, that father image around. Right. And that uh, starts a lot of things because they're searching and thirsting after that father mm. figure. And uh, when uh, our friend died and uh, yeah. a couple of other people died in my family and my mother died and I moved back to Mississippi mm -hmm. and I stayed at her house and I was in that room in uh, my old bedroom yeah I know for at least six months uh -huh. to a year and I was mourning but I was also mourning inside and I was you know trying to stop you know the uh, the action then okay. and uh, okay. I used to watch Yama at the starting <coughs> over program. Yeah, I remember every that. Every morning at 11. Is that right? Yes. And that was my, uh, what? Uh, it helped. That was your fix. medicine. That my was your fix. fix huh? yeah. day. And I actually remember us talking mm -hmm. about that. Didn't you tell me yes. About. And so that that helped me mm -hmm. so, so much uh, doing that. And uh, just get you, you know, get you a mentor, somebody to, you know, right. to help you, you know, along the way. But, uh, with the, the men. So they're thirsting after that love. Mm -hmm. So that's why they go for one person. Anybody who tells them they're beautiful, uh, you're <coughs> right. fine, or mm -hmm. this and that. Because I, I know and I remember that from in my ear. Mm -hmm. So my father died when I was seven. Okay. And so me in there listening to starting over yeah. and uh, getting all that therapy, I said, that's what's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's it. And a light bulb went off in my head. Is that right? Yes. You know, I, from the father that I knew, he was very loving and would do anything that agape love, anything for me. Yeah. And I remember that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was trying to always Seeking, get, you yeah. know. And uh, that's what, that's that, that father figure. And I have I had a stepfather. And he was, he was that, but he wasn't my biological father, right. but he did everything that he could, you know, he helped me with my homework, you know, he was there mm -hmm. for me to steal quarters out of his, <laughs> his pocket while he was asleep, you know, yeah. uh, but, uh, and my uncle was there, my uncle James, he was there, you know, to put me in modeling and to do uh, social things and yeah. give me my social skills and stuff, but it wasn't like my daddy. Right, know? right. And I had, I came to that conclusion, and after that, you know, after you pluck the root out of yeah, and what's bothering you. That's you know, always the key, finding, getting to the getting root. Getting to the root, the root and plucking yeah. it out. Not just, <clears throat> not just getting to it, but plucking it out. Not just pouring uh, <clears throat> the peroxide on it, on it mm -hmm. and let it boil, not, but plucking it out. Okay. And that's what you have to do. And yeah. That's, and that's what a lot of girls and, mm -hmm. and young men, right. you know, I, they have stories. Mm -hmm. And that communication and them talking it out and talking about it. Right. And people seeing that in, in them, you know, noticing. Yeah. And then, you know, get get the, if, if the parents can't talk to them because, you know, a lot of parents, they can't communicate with their children. Right. Because everybody, when you say sex, S-C-X. Yeah, everybody They think run. it's yucky and nasty. <laughs> right. But God created it. We made it nasty. Mm -hmm. But God created it to be beautiful, right. you know, between a man and a woman. Absolutely. Um, you know, but uh, that's in, you know that part of the Bible, and that's what you know if you believe that, and that's what you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in that sense. But uh, they have just degraded it 
so much and taking right. it from one, you know, to the other. Place. I, you know, I think one of the things that, that's important is for, uh, especially for a young lady, mm -hmm. is to have the presence of a male in her life, yes. to be the example mm -hmm. of what she should expect for right. her life that's and right. in her life. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times what happens is that they don't have that. They and are. a lot of times they don't have it because of the premarital sex. Mm -hmm. And the mom got pregnant at an early age, right. and the man didn't stay with her, and right. daddy wasn't there, yeah. and grandma keep the kids. Yes. And, you know, so it's and like generations a, of generations <coughs> passed There you go. You know. And then, there you go. I was going to say mm -hmm. a vicious cycle for lack of a better word uh, and it just continues to go but the thing is we got to find the solutions you know yes. and of course self-esteem is certainly mm, one of those things so that we important. have to instill in the young ladies mm -hmm. and to let them know their value yeah and you are yeah. more than that you, you are, are more, more than, than just yeah. a chicken sandwich mm -hmm. and a lay and you, Come on, are, you know you are more than than just uh what uh What's the red lobster? Uh, so okay. Oh, please. Thinking you, you thinking you went somewhere. Yeah. Went to you Papa Dole and had a piece of fish or something. <laughs> But you're you, more than you're that. More than you're that. More than but, and you have to realize your value yourself. Mm -hmm. But also the parents have to instill, instill that, that in mm -hmm. you so that when you go out into the world, right. you won't behave in that mm -hmm. manner of someone who didn't have self-esteem right. or had not been privy to mm -hmm. a, perhaps a man in their life or as a role model right. and things of that nature. You and, know? and what triggered me, too, I have a 22-year-old. Uh, mm -hmm. And at that particular time, she was 12, 13. And me with my lifestyle mm -hmm. I was like oh my goodness you know because uh -huh. they put you on a pedestal because you don't let them see certain things right <laughs> but when they start getting older and, and they start checking, checking you yeah saying well if you doing this that and other thing mm -hmm. and you telling me what well, then her favorite word is hypocrite oh that you Ooh, that just that run through just, you don't uh, yeah but it was the truth yeah. you know they are a mirror Absolutely. They're your mirror. And I thank God for all three of my mirrors. <laughs> yeah, I thank God for them. Because uh, they made me who I am today. Mm -hmm. Because of, you know, them talking, you know, we're talking. And I used right. to be such a uh, a mean, uh, yeah, I know you can't believe, but uh, oh, a, very believe strict, no. <laughs> a very strict, strict parent. Yeah. Until the last one came and the, uh, you know, I tried, but it just wouldn't work. She was a different <laughs> Type a different of child, breed, yeah. But just still now, those other two, mm -hmm. they are yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes ma'am. And they are. And the, other, are. the last one, she's a rebel, but with a cause. <laughs> but I, I thank God for all three of them. Of course, of mm -hmm. course. But uh, that, the, uh, so I started saying, I have to be an example. Yeah. I can't do that. I can't say, don't do that, and I'm not doing it. Right. So I had to start. Uh, you know, being an example, and, and you know what? In, in my truth. And as you continue parenting, you mm -hmm. I don't care how old you are, I think yes. you continue to learn as you, oh, yes. as you, you could be 90 years old, but there's still mm -hmm. something for you to learn, mm -hmm. you know, as a parent and, and things like that. I'm so glad we're having this dialogue. Yes. We're having a, a, a really good time with this dialogue. Thank Is you. there anything that you would like to say to any, any of the young ladies that might be watching this program, Jerry? Just wait. Any word of advice? Just wait. <laughs> it's, Just it's, wait. It's not what it's cracked up to be. And uh, what I do is I show, go online and show uh, uh, and type in sexually transmitted diseases. Mm, and which is a whole, another, a oh, whole yeah. other topic and, in itself. And that's what I use on my talks and I do scare straight. Because when I finish showing you those pictures, oh, that, and then I sometimes I have to go back and look at them. Because that, that, that's a good, a good uh, birth control. Is it the, the, oh, the yeah. pictures themselves? Are, uh, <laughs> yes. You have you never seen it? Uh-uh. Uh -uh. well, I'm going to show you some when we finish. Uh, that, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to see it. It's, a, it's, it's a real good because it shows you all the diseases, how it deteriorates your body. Oh, wow. Uh, and all the sores and everything that's, you know. Okay, wow. That's on the mouth. Of what, what? The, 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 uh, of the, the, the ladies the yes <laughs> wow and that's yes. real talk that's mm -hmm. real talk uh this is great dialogue you know what uh, well you know what a word of advice you said it earlier mm -hmm. uh young ladies keep your shoes on keep your shoes on don't get comfortable don't get comfortable because <laughs> <laughs> it can certainly lead to other things yes. i hope you guys have enjoyed this segment of let's talk about it as much as i have with my wonderful guest miss jerry thomas uh it's been a I hope educational and in, uh, inspirational and motivational and i hope you guys gain something from it thanks so much for joining me on this edition of let's talk about it and for more information on the show you can reach me at let's talk about it 12 tv at gmail.com that's let's talk about it 12 tv at gmail.com until next time we'll see you then